So, in summary so far, the most essential filters, in our view, is a polarising filter, especially if you're doing landscape photography, a polarising filter for increasing colour saturation and a grad filter for reducing the brightness of the sky. In fact, you can, of course, turn it the other way up if you've got a very, very bright foreground, but generally speaking, it'll, it'll be the sky. There are a whole bunch of other filters you can also use, though, to have a different effect on your picture to create some sort of visual special effect or an aesthetic effect. And let's look at some of those. If you're going to use a graduated filter to darken the sky, why not introduce a colour to that graduation to create a nice, a nice visual colour effect? You can, of course, buy coloured grads. There are lots of them on the market. This is the legendary tobacco grad, which people use to either enhance a sunset or to try and create the effect of a sunset when none exists. Over here I've got a sunset filter, which of course does the same thing. This is a graduated filter with a difference because it's, it's orange all over, but it's darker orange at the top and slightly lighter orange at the bottom. This is called a sunset grad. Now, the first thing to say about these coloured grads, and you can get them in blue, green, purple, all kinds of colours and different strengths, is that uh, they're really best used to enhance an effect that's already there. A sunset, for example, if I was to stick this tobacco filter over this lens now, and I'm going to say, right, I'm going to shoot a sunset, Frankly, it's not going to fool anybody. The light's completely wrong. It's just the wrong time of day. However, if I was to go out where there is a sunset and use one of these filters, I can certainly enhance the colours that are already there. And that is probably where they're best used. Here we have a blue grad. Now, blue grad can be used, obviously, to enhance the blue sky. Of course, it won't really work if there are clouds in the sky because the, the grad will turn the clouds blue as well. But if you've got a cloudless blue sky, you can, of course, enhance that blue. Well. There's a range of filters called diffusers or soft focus filters and these do pretty much what it says on the tin. They soften the picture and create a nice misty soft focus romantic effect. The primary use of them is in portraiture where modern lenses and modern cameras produce images that are so sharp that sometimes, well do you really want to see all the little zits and hairs and pores in people's faces? Probably not, especially if you're photographing female subjects, they won't really thank you for that. So a soft focus filter they are possibly a little bit hackneyed, a bit cliche now, but uh, they do have their applications and people still use them over the, over the lens for creating a slightly soft misty effect. And again, you can get them in different strengths, so you can have a subtle effect or a stronger effect. You can also get these filters in the round or the square format and it really doesn't matter which one you use. So what do we have here? We have a solid neutral density filter. This is very much like the ND grad except that it's grey all over. Now the purpose of this filter is to reduce your exposure overall completely. Now there may be times where you want to use a really slow shutter speed for some sort of visual effect to create a deliberate blur, but the light levels are so bright that now even if you stop down to your smallest aperture you still can't get a slow enough shutter speed. This is where the ND filter comes in and again you can get these in round or the square format. I've got a, I've got a sheet filter here, I'm going to put it in the front here. This is a two-stop filter so this will reduce your shutter speed by two stops and I guess things like sport or motion if you want to create the, sense of, uh, the feeling of motion, um, waterfalls where you want to create that blurred water effect but it's actually too bright for you to do that by setting a really slow shutter speed. The ND filter is the filter that you need for that. So the final group of filters is our coloured filters. Now in the days when people shot black and white film the way they used to control the tonal range in their scene was to use coloured filters. They'd use yellow, orange or red filters typically to uh, block their complementary colour and darken that colour. So a yellow filter, uh, an orange filter or a red filter would be used to darken a blue sky, bring out the cloud detail a bit more. Uh, and of course the red would have the strongest effect, the yellow would have some effect, the orange is slightly more effect and the red filter would have a very strong effect and create the effect of almost an almost black sky in the right circumstances. Now again, when people are shooting in digitally, they can convert their picture to black and white on the PC. But suppose you don't want to do that. Suppose you want to shoot black and white in camera. You can set your camera to the black and white mode, which most cameras can do. And then of course you can use these filters just as you used to in the days of black and white film. You can also get filters with very subtle tints like warm-up filters, which are very pale orange, that just introduce a slight bit of warmth. Again, these aren't essential because you can do that using the white balance of your camera. But the filters are there if you want to use them and if you prefer to do it that way. So there we have it. That's the world of filters. As you can see, there's a huge choice available. And really, if you've only just skimmed the surface, there's a lot more out there to choose from. But whatever kind of photography that you do, you're going to find a filter out there for you. And there are different price points to suit every budget. So take a look. Oh, <laughs>